Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode where we're doing the Bible study. Um, these are always, an, it's a nice break because, you know, we talk about the news, but the news gets really old. So let's read the news. It's always brand new and that's from the Bible. So uh, today we're going to do something interesting. Hey, uh, J.D., you want to do something interesting today? Oh, absolutely. And I agree with you 100% on the news thing. <laughs> I enjoy these a lot more than I do the news reports. Yeah, I mean, we got to know the news, but yeah, you know, let's get to the word, right? Yeah, exactly. uh, First things first, would you pray us into our show? Absolutely, I will. Uh, right. Father, we come to you and we, we ask, please, that you give us the words to say today. And please, Father, we want this show to reach that last individual to accept you before the rapture of the church. We know it's coming. And Father, we we pray that, that you will open the eyes and the ears of the individual out there that needs to receive this message prior to that great moment when we go home. We don't want to leave anybody behind. We want them to come with us. And Father, we know that your word never comes back void. We put our faith in you 100% knowing that you will lead us in the right direction. And Father, I, I want to ask specifically that that you give David the words to say as, as he is the true teacher here and give me the right questions to ask. We hope it makes a difference. We know it will. In, in the precious name of Jesus Christ, we ask all this. Amen. 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 All right, so uh, what you're going to have to do on this show, Joel, is you're going to have to uh, somehow anticipate the questions that the people are going to have when we play the recorded show and ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Can you do that? I'll sure try. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, just, just when you thought it was safe and you got out of the beginning of Genesis, mm -hmm. we're going back. <laughs> okay, we were up to, what, chapter 4, and now you're going to take us backwards? Well, almost. We almost made chapter 4, but, okay. you know, you can't go back without cleaning up. I mean, I do that everywhere I go. If I leave the restaurant, I'm going to pack up all my stuff and then mm -hmm. look around and see if I left anything there. Right. You know, if I'm, I'm in a hotel, you know, my wife's like, okay, you know, I checked the room. It's all cleaned out. Great. I'll do the final run through. Me too. I and, do the uh, same thing. I do the same thing. You're looking all the drawers and, hey, did I miss anything? <laughs> okay. Well, we'll forever be missing things because the word right. of God is eternal. But That's the truth. I went back and I think I found some cool stuff that um, would be really useful in our understanding. And um, that would be getting a um, the Hebrew perspective on the Bible. Okay. I know when, when we talk, we're, we're in America, uh, so we have that Western American churchianity kind of thought about right, the bible right. we look at it from from our point of view and what we have to realize that america was not here when they wrote the bible right mm. yeah that's something Let, a lot of people don't I, get I yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so um it's best to learn the hebrew thought behind it mm -hmm. okay and uh, just just as an example people say oh look he told a different uh, narrative about creation it says adam and Eve were they created on day six and then he goes back and he talks about how it did the, yeah because that's the way the hebrews wrote mm -hmm. they basically you you lay out the synopsis and then mm -hmm. you back up and you revisit it and explain yeah. it with more detail fill in yeah. all the detail mm -hmm. that's just the way they write okay and yeah, they write I think with we kind of we, we, we kind of touched on that in uh, one of the, one of the earlier shows and one of my crazy questions and if you yep. remember, yeah, but yep, I, yep, I know yep. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, so it's basically you lay out the premise, and then you back up, and you fill in more of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a good movie will do something like that, too. Yeah. You know, and, and yeah, give different right. POVs. You know, it'll tell the story from one person, then it'll back up and retell the story from another person's point of, point of view. Okay. All right, so what we want to do now is um, take a look at some of the the words that were used in the Hebrew and uh, de Englishize them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that yeah, a word? People, people need to realize, I'm, I'm going to throw this in real fast and I'll let you go, but people need to realize that uh, the Bible was not, not written in English. And so uh, any, I don't care what version of the Bible that you're getting, you're not getting it exactly the way that, that it was given. Mm-hmm. And uh, so this, this hopefully we can shed a little more light on that. 
Okay. Um, and I, I'll, I'll start with um, Adam. You've heard of Adam, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we think, oh, it's just Adam, but what does that really mean? All right. And then, and Adam, and we'll talk about Eve at another time, but we're going to dig into Adam today. So basically, um, it's Adam, which is an Aleph Dalit Mem. Okay, and the olive is the strength of the house. Okay, it's like a picture mm-hmm. of an ox head. The okay. Dalit is a door. Okay, so it means okay, you can you can go in this direction. And mem is like our M, mm-hmm. and it's 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 it symbolizes water. Okay, okay. or yeah. the flow of something. So mm-hmm. if water means something's flowing, like um, Emma is um, the word for mother. Mm. And it's Aleph Mem. It's a strength of the water. She keeps the house flowing. Uh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. So Aleph Mem is this sh- the strength of the water, and Aleph Bet is uh, Aleph is the strength, and then Bet is the house. So the strength of the house is is the father. So that's okay. we see Ab, and then in the Hebrew they they just turn it around. So it's Abba, okay, and then Ama. So it's uh, Aleph Mem Mem Aleph. Or Aleph, Bet, Bet, Aleph, and that's where, you know, Jesus said, oh, Abba, Father. And mm-hmm. where they cry, Abba, okay. Father. Okay. But that's that's kind of a thought process there. Okay. So when we look at Adam, it, it has the root word, and um, it's Aleph, Dalit, Mem. But there's there's other words for uh, a man, okay? So mm. Adam means human, not oh. just man. Okay. Okay. Because so we say Adam and Eve, but basically both of them are Adam. Both of them are mankind. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now ma- Eve, that, that's a little bit confusing on that one now. Yeah, but well, remember they're one, and Eve yeah. was just pulled out of his side, so there was right. one. Adam, right. Adam was one. Okay. Okay. So, um, but that's also a Dalit Mem, or Dam, is the word for blood. Mm, okay okay yeah. and it's the door to water or this is okay this is what causes the flow of your life is the blood right right so yeah. that you're getting this kind of a word picture and so you really have to think word pictures when you're doing hebrew now blood is like right. blood blood is basically the life right as far, yeah, i mean you got, no um, blood, you, you got problems yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know of anything uh, maybe there's something out there and you know I don't, I don't know of anything that doesn't have, well, anyway, I'm not going to get yeah, too Yeah, the life sources in the yeah. blood. And they're, they're finding out more and more about blood, and uh, mm-hmm. and there, there's actually more neuro connections in your heart than mm-hmm. there is in your brain. Wow. Okay. It, your brain is just kind of like uh, uh, you know, maybe the keyboard and, and the screen as opposed mm-hmm. to the central chip of the computer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. And that's why the Bible talks about like the heart too. Yeah, you know, no, in his heart he believes this. Well, yeah. isn't it in his brain? No, it's actually in his heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're going to get a heart transplant, make sure you know who it's coming from. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just a side note. <laughs> I don't want that uh, part. No, no, no. I don't want Madeline Murray O'Hare. Thank you very much. No, no, no. Don't need hers. Um, <laughs> so. The words um, blood and anything that's um, that related to it, it's, it also gives the implication of red. Mm. So the word for uh, soil, okay, sometimes it's earth. Like if you look in Genesis 1.26, um, it, I think it's 1.26. Let us make yeah, matter oh, in our image. Let, yeah, let us make man in our image. Yeah, yeah that's 1.26. Uh, oh no no! I'm looking at um, and twenty five, mm. twenty six is it? That's gonna we'll get into that in a little bit. But when it says the King James has it as, for God made every beast of the earth after its kind, mm-hmm. and then every cattle after its kind, everything that creeps on the earth after its kind. But it's not that's two different words there. The first one is edits, which is the land. Like that's this is the place where we live. Where okay. the second one is Adama, which is actually the dirt. Okay, okay. explain. I would really you, mean ground. You lost me on that one. Try try oh. that one again. 
All right, so what version you have? Like in the King James? I, I got the New God? King James. I, I got the New King James, and y'all are gonna oh, have to forgive me because I'm I'm on my iPad today. But um, what? Let me see. Let me get back here to one twenty-five. Okay. Um, and God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Okay, that second earth there. Mm -hmm. The beast of the earth is Eretz. Okay. Which is like to be firm, like it's on the land. Okay. But the everything that creeps on the earth, that's actually Adama. So everything that creeps on the dirt, basically, uh, on the okay, ground. Okay. Okay. I got you. Okay. Okay. It's, it's a different word. But again, that's why he's named Adam, because Adama, mm -hmm. okay, you, you're adding an ending to it, the, the Adama, the, the breath. So the okay. dirt is where the life comes from, which is where Adam comes it came from yeah yeah because god made it, it made it clear that that's where he came from <laughs> yeah yeah so it's somehow associated with the blood okay in the ground so adam adam is associated with dom which is blood and mm -hmm. adama the earth so you see it's not just hey he just he made adam no he's literally connected mm -hmm. okay he's he's the blood is red okay so that connects it, and the dirt is red because a good dirt, as we know, okay. is red. Uh, mm. So it's all okay. connected in the ruddiness, and um, I'm kind of red myself. See? You look a little red. <laughs> a little red hair, red, <laughs> red everything. Uh, that's all right. King David was uh, ruddy as well, so <laughs> so that's cool. So you see, start you start to see the connections with everything, mm -hmm. and Dom, Adam, and Adama. Okay. It, it it's all connected and that's where it all it, it comes from so also if we look uh where'd it go da, 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 da. now it that's blood there examining a few of the words Adama. okay we got that yeah i was looking at the, some other ancient hebrew roots as well and it kind of says the same thing adam was formed down to the ground mm-hmm all right, we covered that. Well, that was pretty good. All right, so we see them there now when we go to, um, uh, where do we go here? I got all my notes jumbled. Go on, jumble them. Yeah, I'm working <laughs> on it. I thought that one would take longer, but that was pretty easy. Yeah, that, I well, I mean, I've, I've, actually, I thought I was slowing you down, but, you know. <laughs> no, I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, it's pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, okay, I mean, gonna... I look at Adam as granddaddy. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know it's granddaddy, uh, you know, millennia, millennia, millennia ago, but um, everybody that's on the earth right now comes from Adam and Eve. Everybody. 100%. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Yeah. And then, and then subsequently from Noah. Yeah. Right. Because there had to be that flood thing going on there. Which mm -hmm. is the precursor to that rapture thing that we are anticipating. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's a whole different stuff. Go ahead. All right, so let's let's move on. I know we were um, talking about verse twenty six because I made a mistake in the first verse. So let's go back to uh, <laughs> verse twenty six. Okay. And uh, we did touch on this a little bit, but I really mm -hmm. wanted to get into the words here. So uh, you want to read verse twenty six? Sure. Um, let me see. Then God said, let us make man in our image. And that to me is huge. That Just that mm -hmm. one there. Uh, according to our likeness, let th them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. <clears throat> nice. Uh, I was a little more than 26, but I was... Yeah, that's a huge... Well, I couldn't stop. I'm sorry. That's the way I am when I read the Bible. I can't stop. <laughs> it's actually really good because it all fits into this. So all the animals were made, and, and they were made with um, a nefesh, so they have a soul. You know, you often wonder, oh, do animals have a soul? Well, the animals do have souls, but mm -hmm. that, that's it's not a spirit, if you will. Okay. It's not 
in the image of God, so it's not eternal. Okay. Okay. So, um, and I, I might get people get mad at me for this, but your animals are not going to be raptured. Yeah, yeah, that's you're not you know, gonna see those pets again. that that is a huge debatable thing. I mean, even you know, I went to a church. And I, I think we talked about this before. But I'll do it again. Um, went to a church in in Mesquite, and the pastor mm-hmm. said, you know, if you're expecting your dog or your cat to go in heaven, he said cats for sure don't go. But because uh, <laughs> him, he had this he had this thing against cats for whatever reason. But anyway. <laughs> Um, but he said, no, you know, in all seriousness, you know, uh, the pets do not go to heaven. And even after that sermon and going through it, I, I talked to other people who were actually like deacons in the church. And they said, well, we disagree with him on that one. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> what no, can I say? I mean, I like you know, I, I get it. You want, you know, you want your animal. You want them. Yeah, you want it, whether it's true or not. Yeah. Yeah, we need Rover to come back in it. You know, and, and be there. But imagine if you had all your pets, you know, yeah. and like every gerbil that ever existed in heaven. <laughs> it's going to be a problem. Yeah. You know, I had tons of gerbils. They they multiply like gerbils, those things. Uh, so, um, but they don't. The, mm. the good news is they're better. Mm. So the one, when, we, when we get home, the animals that are there will actually be new and improved. Mm. I suspect you'll even be able to talk with them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that we talked about that too in an earlier show mm-hmm. that we felt like um, animals did talk prior mm-hmm. to prior to the fall. Yeah, yep. maybe we we'll get there again. Um, who knows? What a beautiful thing! So God said, "Let us make man in our image." So, in other words, now we're different than the animals, right? Because the animals have uh, basically uh, an adhesion contract where. He, this is what you're going to do, Mr. Animal. Right. But we are made in his image and after his likeness, or mm-hmm. our, even says our likeness, out of their likeness. Right. Because it's a council. God, God, the Elohim, um, is it, and God said that's Elohim, which that's, now that's the plural of the Godhead, basically. Mm-hmm. And don't even try and figure it out. You're not going to figure it out, people. Yes, it's three different people, and yes, it's all one person with three different people. Yeah, members. and that's you're not cr- going to figure yeah. it out. Dude. No way. Even when you see him, you might not figure it out. Just deal with it. <laughs> it'll all become clear when we get up there. Yeah, it'll be much more clear than now. We see, uh, like, in a, a mist, a fog right now. So the first one is image, okay? And. Some people think, oh, it's just the same thing. No, it's it, it's two different things. The, the word is selam, okay? And it's a sade uh, lamet mem. So sade is pronounced like a T-S. Mm-hmm. So it's so it's selam. And it's a, a resemblance, mm-hmm. a, like a statue. So basically it is... Oh, hang on a second. Well, while mm-hmm. you're looking at that, I want to, I want to throw something in here real quick, because uh-huh. uh, and this is in verse 26, where it says, "In our image, according to our likeness." And uh-huh. uh, so, uh, I'm I want, I'm throwing this out there for anybody that's into sports, okay? Because uh, you're gonna this should jump off the page at you when it, when you see image and likeness, because right now in the sports world, in college sports world, name image and likeness so you should have uh, image and likeness are different that that's the new thing david and I, you may not know about this but as far as uh they're paying players now so mm. they, they they get money for their name their image or their likeness so there's a mm-hmm. difference there that even they recognize yep so uh the selim is like um a likeness would be a picture or a drawing mm-hmm. or a statue Mm-hmm. that looks like you right right so he's made in our image so we look like god so i imagine because our bodies are a, the perfect design for getting mm-hmm. around so if we're made in god's image you know i think we that god looks like this okay mm-hmm. obviously much mm-hmm. <laughs> infinitely more beautiful and right. powerful <laughs> but it looks like this the two mm-hmm. arms the two legs uh, uh, all that stuff mm-hmm. um and then also after our likeness. Now, likeness is a different word. Mm-hmm. All right. And that word, here, let me pull that one up. Some, when you want to go fast, it doesn't go fast. <laughs> Never. 
It's like uh, I got this mega computer, and then, but it's always <laughs> it's like the programming to mess up. Um, so likeness is the word demuth, Say and it again. that demuth. Okay, demuth, and that has more of um, like it's like a simile comparing things. Uh, this has here the wickedness of people and the venom of a snake. They're alike. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Hmm. So, in other words, we are like him. So, if we're made after his likeness, in other words, we act like him. Uh, we do things like him. Okay. Just like you could, you could probably tell who my father is by the way I act and the jokes I tell and yeah. and yeah. and the little characteristics you have without mm -hmm. even knowing that that's my father. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, okay. oh, you guys are very similar. And yeah. that's where the word simile comes from, mm -hmm. similar. Yeah. So we look like him and we act like him. The good of that's him, anyway. Where, mm -hmm. Yeah, we're supposed to, anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Had to throw that one in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, some of us. Do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, how to do it. <laughs> All right. So if we look like him and we act like him, then um, that gives us, uh, well, he gave us along with that the power to have dominion over mm. the fish of the sea, the fowl, the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really interesting. In the Hebrew, that's really what it looks like, is okay. we, we look like him physically, Mm -hmm. Okay, and we act like him, so we mm -hmm. can tell who our father is. Right. And it is a parallelism as well in the Hebrew. Okay, okay. Um, so it it is um, each one is basically corroborating the other one okay. from a different point of view. Oh, so, oh they, this is definitely of his father because you can look at a picture and mm -hmm. see, I've, like, yeah, that's my father as well. Mm -hmm. Um. And yeah, because the way like, I read this for years, again, mm -hmm. not knowing the image and the likeness thing, is I, the, the way I read it before was like, you know, the, the Bible repeats something if you really want to, if you know, if you want to make a real point. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I thought that was. I didn't think it was two different things, image and likeness. I, I didn't think it was two different things. But like, like I said, it was kind of came into focus for me with sports-wise, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, Every other time I've read this thing, it was just like, okay, that's just the Bible going in and saying it again to make it a major point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there is an element of that as well, because okay. the parallelism, and it's to emphasize it like another level, and they think of everything in, in layers. Like uh, uh, Maimonides mm -hmm. actually figured out, I think it was the 12th century, that we live in 10 dimensions. Mm, you know, mm -hmm, yeah. four of which are knowable, and the other six are subatomic. And he, he figured that all out from Genesis. Wow. <laughs> like all these different dimensions. So people say, oh, the Bible's not a science book. Baloney. <laughs> the Bible invented science. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, come on. The guy, the guy figured out <laughs> quantum physics yeah. in the 12th century by reading Genesis. All right. And we, we live in length and width and height and time. Mm -hmm. Time right. is actually a physical dimension. People don't realize that. Yeah. Because I could be here, but then, you know, what's what's in this spot in in 10 seconds? Well, oh, my nose. Okay, so it's a physical dimension is time. Yeah. And yeah. It's really okay. weird. So four of them are knowable, length, height, width, and time. And the other ones are subatomic, what we might call the spiritual world. Yeah. Yeah, uh, another another. There was a show about another dimension. I can't remember what it was, but anyway, generally, go ahead. The um, one step beyond something, maybe I don't. I don't remember. I'm the Twilight Zone. <laughs> maybe it was Twilight Zone. <laughs> yeah. That was a great show. <laughs> yeah, they can was. mess with your mind with old black and white <laughs> just concepts. There's no right? special effect or anything. <laughs> yeah, so we got this claymation yeah. thing, and we're gonna yeah. mess with your mind. <laughs> <laughs> And it always did. It did, oh. yeah. <laughs> uh, what a beautiful thing. So, um, also, it says we're um, the sun, okay? Uh, we see this, and we'll, we'll polish up this half of the show with the, the son of okay. God. 
okay? okay. And the sun meaning basically, um, and I'll tap on it now and we'll finish it up at the other end of the show. But so it says the, the when it gave the lineage of Jesus, it goes, oh, the son of Shem, Noah, the son mm -hmm. of Enoch, it goes all the way back to the son of Adam because, you know, that's the what Luke was all about. Right. So, but it also says the son of God. Adam was the son of God, which is like a direct creation. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to talk about how um, you're you're not really a son until you're adopted in the Hebrew mindset. So, yeah. you could be born into a house, but you're not really made a son until they you're adopted. That's why you see a lot of uh, adoption terms. You know, we're adopted mm. in Christ. We're you know, uh, and it talks about your inheritance, mm. and it even says, "Hey, someone who's is born in as a slave uh, in their house. You know, they were born that way, but now you you come into adoption, the spirit mm -hmm. of adoption. Mm -hmm. So it's talking about that here, and that's when it says, you know, God gave His only Son. He's my only begotten Son. So no. yeah, we know it's the Son of God, but what He did is that the the Messiah." part of um the trinity was actually adopted so he gets all the inheritance he gets everything mm -hmm. that's why he says my only begotten son yeah it was like well okay yeah we get it he was his son and this and that our western mentality thinks of oh if it's born into your house it's automatically a son no you bring it up and you're like with the intention of making it an adopted son mm -hmm. but it's not until they get the inheritance that they're actually adopted where they, they have the legal right of the inheritance. So that's where we get into salvation itself, basically. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's it's a little bit deeper in the salvation issue. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, on that note, let's end the first half with you really want to be an adopted son of yes. God. And that yes, includes son or daughter, by the way. Yes, it does. Um, so, um, and, uh, you know, time's a ticking. Things, mm -hmm. things are getting close, and if yeah. you know if, uh, someone doesn't nuke us, the rapture is around the corner. Yeah, <laughs> that's just the way it is, folks. But yeah. praise God, if you're on His side, you know, right on the other side of that is mm -hmm. something so beautiful you can't yeah. imagine, and yeah. a relationship with the Creator of the universe who loves you more than you can even fathom. Amen. So I would encourage you to just receive Him today. He He paid off your old debts, and He's just saying, "Hey, come along with me." So. Amen. Just say that. Jesus, I love you. Let's go. Yeah. And we'll see you in the second half. <laughs> My name is Dr. Don Karima, and I host Conversations with Don Karima right here on Revelation Radio, Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central Time. God has blessed me to be a Native American Music Award winner the winner of several Global Music Awards, a World Entertainment Awards nominee for this show, Conversations with Don Karima, Fair Play Country Music Award winner, uh, Indigenous Artist Activist Award winner, and two-time Indigenous Music Award nominee, and the International Singer-Songwriter Awards has just nominated me recently. All that's a great reason to praise God and an even greater reason to join us on Conversations with Dawn Karima. You will love positive people doing positive things. Are you weighed down by life's issues and challenges? Do you need rest from the day-to-day -day grind? Then the Word of God broadcast is your listening station. The Word of God broadcast is a Christ-centered ministry sharing God's marvelous Word. Here you will find you rest from the things of the world. Join us each Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern or 6 p.m. Central Time on Revelation Radio Broadcast. The Word of God broadcast plants the seeds and the Holy Spirit adds the essential nutrients to ensure every soul's growth for the harvest of Jesus soon return. If you want to learn more about God's Word, eternal life, and His Son, Jesus Christ, Join us each Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern or 6 p.m. Central Time on KRRB Revelation Radio. KRRB Grand Saline, Canton, Mineola, Texas. This is News in 60 with Alan Edwards.
This election could be the closest presidential contest since 1876, but a normal polling error could also result in a decisive victory for one candidate. UN discussions continued while the U.S. Secretary of State met with officials from Ukraine and Italy to reaffirm support for Ukraine's energy sector. During their fifth meeting, the G7 Plus ministerial group gathered amid the 79th United Nations General Assembly in New York. The Pentagon announced Monday that additional U.S. troops will be deployed to the Middle East as the conflict between between Israel and Hezbollah intensifies, and the European Union warns it is turning into a full-fledged war. Department of Defense Press Secretary Major General Pat Ryder informed reporters during a press briefing. The U.S. Justice Department has filed an antitrust lawsuit against Visa, accusing the company of using its market dominance to suppress competition in the debit card industry. The lawsuit alleges that Visa's practices harm consumers and businesses by inflating costs. Okay, so looks like we made it, and uh, no rapture yet. Not yet. So I'm still waiting, but it, let's talk about what we were talking about before. So um, we'll get back into it. Joe, we were talking about being a son, right? Yes. Okay. So it talks about, um, you know, it goes all the way back in Luke, the lineage of Jesus, all the way back to Adam. And then it says Adam, and then he was the son of God. Um, right. And then we, we see that... Um, you brought it up that it says, let us make mm -hmm. man in our image. Yeah. Okay? And that's Which is something I, I missed that, David, um, um, as a child or you know, young adult, mm -hmm. whatever. I missed that for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, I, you know, I always thought that Jesus was born, not on Christmas, like I was telling you. I, you know, I didn't buy the day. I mean, that was preached right. properly to me. But um, I was always under the assumption that Jesus Christ was born and that, that's his entry. And that's not the truth. The Bible makes it clear that Jesus was there before the world was created. Mm -hmm. uh, he was. He was uh, what we call part of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. And we see that here. Um, and it says, let us make man in our image. Now, it doesn't give the impression here that he's the son yet. Right. Yeah. Does it? No, it and doesn't. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we think of that as um, a Christophany, all right, where we see Jesus and he comes and he shows himself. Like when he showed up for Joshua, he's like, are you with us or for our enemy? And he's like, mm -hmm. bow down. Um, <laughs> but that was Jesus, but pre-incarnate. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't call him the son. But okay. it implies in some verses, hey, do you know the son? He kissed the son. And, mm -hmm. uh, what's his son's name? Implying that he would be the son. So you think about that. Well, is he the son or is he not the son? Yeah. Yeah. And um, But it's clearly us because the word is Elohim. Mm -hmm. And it's clearly that the council, they were together because they made a decision, a unilateral decision here to create it in our likeness and our image. Mm -hmm. So... Why isn't he named the Son then? And why is he not named the Holy Spirit then? Well, mm. just like Eliezer means God our helper, there's three different roles that are played. But technically, with the Hebrew thought, you're not a son until you're, like, legally adopted. Okay. Okay? Okay. And that's why a lot of people get this impression that, um, oh, Jesus didn't exist until he was born. Mm -hmm. No, that's when it says this this day you so you are my this is my beloved son and then he says you know this day i have begotten thee hey, let's see mm. if i can look that one up okay uh -huh. yeah. yeah that that's another verse i don't think i remember uh and let me see this yeah i, I can't find it right now because it begotten is probably the wrong word uh, but the idea is you know we it talks about adoption a lot Okay. All right, and that's not. It wasn't. That's just not this study. So I'm just gonna have to give you like an overview, and then we we'll, yeah. we can actually do a bigger study on it someday. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to. You know, I, again, I apologize to everybody out there. I am on an iPad, so I'm, th this is really tough for me today. Uh, usually, I would be able to go in there and help David out when finding something, <laughs> and I, I can't do it today when my computer's down. Point. Um, but check this out. Okay. In Galatians, and we're, and we're in chapter four, and this will give you some insight. Um, it says uh, in chapter four, let me see, let me do, 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 do. I, let's start right at the beginning of chapter four. It says, now I say, okay, 
and I'll read it in the uh, American Standard because some people don't like, like the King James so much. All right, now I say, as long as the heir is a child, he does not differ at all from a slave, although he is the owner of everything. Okay. okay. Let me read it so, from the New King James Version, too. Okay. Okay. Which is, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. That's the New mm -hmm. King James Version. And as long as an heir is a child, he does not differ from a slave. But if he's under guardians and managers until the date set by the father. Okay, so there's a date set by the father... And there was guardians and managers. So you were really not adopted just yet in their thought. So also we, while we were children, were held in bondage under the elemental things of the world. And in verse 4, but when the fullness of time came, here, and here we are. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, so that he might redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive adoption as sons. Okay. See, now this is one. Uh, this is one of those verses which I don't remember. And mm -hmm. It's another indication that the more you read the Bible, the more you get you to get on another reading. That's all who it is. Put that in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that, you do that to me. Last time I read it. You do that to me every week, David. Every single week, without without fail. <laughs> Whose idea was this? Why am I not informed? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, our, that was the best line in uh, Airplane <laughs> 2. <laughs> Why am I not informed? That was Captain Kirk. Um, so, yeah, in the fullness of time, God sent his son and born of the law so we can receive adoption as son. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're, we're children, but now there's an adoption which says, okay, you've You've proven yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm going to give you your inheritance. You are mm -hmm. adopted, and you come and you fully inherit everything. Because mm -hmm. there's times when he didn't, like like uh, Esau, you know? Mm -hmm. He didn't get the adoption, and that's why he was uh, livid, let's say. Yeah, yeah. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So there's a trinity. You got the Holy Spirit, the Son, and the Father, all in one verse in, in Galatians 4, 6. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. Mm -hmm. And if a son, then an heir through God. Okay, so this all ties together. We see that picture in the beginning. He wasn't called the son, but he was clearly in the beginning, the three of them. Right. But when he, when he came to earth, then he says, okay, now he's got the redoption the adoption and he earned the inheritance mm -hmm. you'll see that throughout the new testament as well where jesus earned the inheritance okay yeah. because he gave his life and he walked a perfect life mm -hmm. he walked a perfect mm -hmm. life and he gave up his life and inheritance so he can give that inheritance to us in the right. great exchange mm -hmm. so you're not necessarily a son at first and you can see that same picture when um god talks to abraham and he said, take Isaac, your only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what, I, clearly Isaac had more than one son. Mm, you know, yeah. because Ishmael was first. Yeah. So what does he mean, Isaac, There's my another only one. begotten There's son? There's another one of them that pops out at you. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. All right. And it's because of that word begotten. Ishmael was not adopted to be the inheritor. Mm, okay. He says, your inheritance is in Isaac. Yeah, okay. Okay. So yeah. when we think of son, we're thinking, oh, it's his son, like his physical offspring. The Hebrew mindset is, no, the son is the one that you designate to be the firstborn, to be the mm. inheritor, to so, be... Okay, I got, I got a crazy question for you. So, okay, so let's say oh, that... Um, uh, and I'll, uh, Isaac and Esau, or whatever I forget. Uh, Ishmael was the first. Ishmael, one. Ishmael, ding. Okay. Anyway, let, let's say that that um, that he had wanted Ishmael to be his first son. Could he have just said that? And you know, Abraham. Yeah. Um, Abraham could have. It probably wouldn't have gone over too well. No, I'm, I know it wouldn't have gone over well. God would have got <laughs> on him about it. But I'm, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is, is, is it possible for people? Um, 
to you know if if a dad liked one over another you're my mm-hmm. son and you're not basically well is, that is, that happened a couple of times okay. because um if you remember um jacob and esau mm-hmm. that whole yeah. story yeah abraham isaac so isaac he wound up he liked esau better mm. but what happened oh, that's right that's right because he got he was blind and yep. um and uh, uh esau had uh, esau yeah. had uh, real hairy mm-hmm. arms or whatever yeah so mom comes in mm-hmm. right mom mom changes his whole thing uh mm-hmm. rebecca and then she's like listen you're the one okay yeah. so she's mm-hmm. gonna make this thing happen and um she did something interesting she said let you know let any curses come upon me she said yeah so, uh, but i want you to go lie yeah. That's basically it. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and and it, well, he's the conniver, right? Yeah. <laughs> heel grabber, right? Right. Uh, Yaakov means a uh, heel grabber, which means he's the conniver and the yeah. one doing tricky things to hold you back. Uh huh. And that's the picture, the word picture there. Yeah, but Isaac wanted Esau. He's like, yeah. oh, well, Esau is cool. Look what he does. Yeah. And uh, yeah. mom's like, no, I like the little flaky boy over here. Let's um. <laughs> Uh, one of them's a monster, and the cool. other one's like really meek or something. Is a is a yeah. way that I always looked at it. Yeah, Jay. However, I mean, you got to hand it to him. Mm-hmm. You know, he Jacob it off. wrestling all night. Yeah. With yeah. you know what it says, an angel, which we know is a Christophany. Mm-hmm. It, and you know, people everywhere else in the Bible, you go everywhere, everywhere. When people see an angel, they fall flat on their face. Oh, it's like yeah, Joshua. And, they, you know, and, they, and they're scared and they're like terrified. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jacob sees an angel and he tackles him. Yeah, he fights it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so and, that I, I know from, from one of the Israeli wars, it might have been the 67 war. Uh, mm-hmm. But I know that there were people that were involved in that war, whichever one it was. And they they thought they were just going to overwhelm the Israelis, and all of a sudden they they saw a bunch of angels, and it scared mm-hmm. the daylights out of them, and they were out of there. You know, I mean yeah. that that was reports coming in from the from the wrong side. The Israel uh, yep. the Israelis didn't say that; they did. The attackers did. Yeah, Elijah did that too, didn't he? Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those who are with us are more than those against us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the whole. You know, the son thing. You're not a son until they actually, you know, okay, you're my yeah, son now. That's interesting. Even though you were yeah. born into the house. I had never thought um, about that. Mm-hmm. So now when we look at it and it says, oh, we became, and we, we might receive adoption as sons. You're like, well, what's that? Mm-hmm. Well, once you're adopted, there's no unadopting you. Okay. 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 So once the inheritance is given, like in Christ, w- we cannot lose our inheritance. Right. No matter how stupid we are the only thing you could do is be like esau and give it away yeah walk, walk away, away walk away from it yeah yeah and mm-hmm. the, you know and that's that uh i wouldn't suggest that no okay but there's no one could take it from you no god's not going to leave you mm-hmm. it's your inheritance just keep it yeah. you know and he, no matter all the stupid things you do it's still your inheritance right because we came to that point where we might receive the adoption as sons because christ gave his life amen all right so that's real important. So if you're scared that you did something wrong and that you might lose your salvation, no, no. you're not going to lose it. Not unless but you go I, and you just start. You go to um, just an example, and I'm not I'm not saying this to be mean or anything because I looked at this guy as a hero when I was young, and that's Muhammad mm-hmm. Ali. Okay, ah. and from what I understand, well, he gave it away. yeah, from what I understand, as Cassius Clay, he received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and then gave it away and uh, turned away from Christ and adopted Muhammad and, well, bad move. Mm-hmm. Totally and there, there you go with that. And then he winds up with that disease. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, the, you, there's, no one can take it from you. So don't don't give it up. Okay. Uh, so, so there's that. All right. So I want to look at something else as well. And that is... Okay. Uh, again, in Genesis uh, one twenty six, and it says you take dominion, right? Uh, it says, let, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion mm-hmm. over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air, 
Um, you know what? While we're here, what is the typical church impression of him taking dominion over everything? Hmm. I have to think about that one for a second. I'm not really sure. Um, to take uh, control, um, be better than um, they are. They fear you. I, I don't know. It's that that one's hard, David. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, the word is um, rada. Rada. Okay. Yeah, in seventy two eighty seven. All right, and it's to tread into pieces, to conquer, just to subdue. Okay, so it literally means you're you're going to rule over this whole place. Okay, um, I, I looked at it as you know they look up to you, they fear you, they you know. Um, I don't I don't know I don't know what I think <laughs> about that. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. So that's why you know it's important to get this mindset. Mm -hmm. Conveys a notion of exercising domain, whether legitimate or not, but this okay. one is legitimate. Um, and over those who are powerless or otherwise under one's control. So you see the adhesion contract comes here, too, because mm -hmm. um, when he created the animals, he's like, okay, this is what you're going to do. Water, you're going to go here. Sky, you're going to go there. Sun, you're going to do this. There is no decision on their part. He's under full mm -hmm. control. Well, he gave that full control over everything in the earth yeah okay, okay. Mm -hmm. so the and the it comes up uh the root the root of it all so it's rada but there's ear do so you see the rd in there um to rule it connotes a uh, fierce exercise and influence and even a mastery over mastery yeah okay that yeah. that one that one goes in with what i was thinking before too Mm -hmm. okay and so that mastery would keep everything in line because that's what when he tells them later to subdue it mm -hmm. that's what that word means when it if it gets out of line you put it back in line yeah okay and i do so that with my dominion i do that and, with my pets and, every and day mm -hmm. okay. and that's so that's down here in the bottom in uh let me see here subdue uh, da -da 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 -da. Is this right at? No. Let's edit. And this is the word kibosh. You ever hear that, that term? I put the kibosh on you? Yeah, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I never <laughs> understood what it was, but I, yeah, I, yeah, I well, put the kibosh on Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Hebrew word. <laughs> okay. And that's what it means to subdue. Okay. Uh, to tread down, hence. Um, Di disregard negatively, positively, conquer, mm -hmm. subjugate, violate, bring into bondage, keep under, bring into subjection. Basically, gets out of line, put it back in line. Yeah. So you take dominion over this, and you make sure it, it acts accordingly. And yeah. does I never nice. knew kibosh was an Israeli thing. Put the kibosh on <laughs> I've heard that all my life. I, you know. Put the kibosh. Mm. I don't know. It's like a mensch, I guess. <laughs> Oi. <laughs> oh, so yeah th there's that <laughs> so it's, it, it's good to get like a little bit better um increase and then mm -hmm. i mean like an increased knowledge of right. the word and where they come from this way you you just get a, a more fuller picture of what right. he's really talking about right it's not oh well he made man no he made it's it's because it's red because of the blood and because of the ground and this is where he came mm -hmm. out of and yeah. you know mankind where aish means a man like a like a um a male mm -hmm. uh the word adam means mankind mm -hmm. so when we see that but when we say man now in english oh oh you're too oh, well, you're you're a sexist no it's just the word <laughs> man means mankind mankind right yeah yeah but in hebrew it, you can clearly you know differentiate yeah uh and then it says to be fertile and and increase mm -hmm. so you know it says in king james will say be multiply you know be fruitful and multiply mm -hmm. uh, fruitful and fertile so mm -hmm. it's kind of the same so let's move on over to the whole fruit thing okay. all right okay and then let me see so he's talking to him in the garden right yes and he's talking you shall till the ground right 
So let me look that one up here. We got he, the word for placing. Number one, he placed Adam in a garden, and that has the same root as the word Noah. So it's Yanachehu, Yanachehu. So Nocha in the middle is Nocha, Noach. That's where we get the word, and that means rest. So it okay. has a root and rest. When he placed them in there, the idea was this is a restful place. Ah, oh, we're going to place you in here, and it's it's restful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and even the word Eden, so Eden means delight, it's a pleasure. Yeah. So this was a pleasurable place, so he's going to rest in this pleasurable place, and that was his life. Mm -hmm. Just resting in his place, food was all over the place, so it's, it's all over yeah. the ground. Yeah, we need yeah, to mean, pick it up right yeah, over there. The you can just have it, <laughs> whatever yeah. it is, yeah, you just have it, that, that's cool. And th that's what we're going to go back to. It's mm -hmm. a place where it's going to be like the garden again. Yeah. Right. We're we're not going to have to um, to you know by the sweat of our brow mm. any yeah. any work we do. We're going to get into work in a minute, but it, it's not going to be hard anymore. It's a place of rest and a mm -hmm. place of delight, luxury, fertility, mm -hmm. refinement. So it's going to be really neat and cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then the work it says you shall work the garden that is more uh and guard it and to keep it so he said mm -hmm. to keep it as is guarding it in other words you this is your place is make sure it stays this way yeah. you're guarding Tend it. And but keep. the word mm -hmm. the word uh, for work is avoda and avoda is actually um connotes the the idea of worship so when they're okay. working the ground, they're you know we always think of worship as hey we're singing we got right. the praise and worship band. right uh -huh. it really doesn't have anything to do with that praise is singing worship is doing what God told you to do yeah okay okay because we see Abraham he said he went up on the mountain to worship the Lord but well, mm -hmm. what was he doing he's climbing up the mountain carrying all these logs with his son who he's going to kill yeah but <laughs> well, where's where's the band y y right. <laughs> <laughs> But there's okay. no band. I thought this was worship. <laughs> no, worship is basically obeying the Lord, and it's okay. pretty okay. much all. It, it's the vast majority of the time, if not all the time, it has a a bodily reaction that goes with it. Like it, the worship is to bow down. In other words, right. to give and say, "Okay, you are the king, yeah. and I'll do what you ask." Right. That's the idea of worship. Okay. okay. All of it has some kind of a bodily thing to it. And yeah. then we get into that on another show, too. Um, so when we're worshiping the Lord, we're doing something in the garden. Okay? So it's, is it really working, working, as we think of hard work? No. By the toil and sweat of our brow? No, it's just doing the things that a garden would need. Okay. Okay? okay. But it's a pleasure. It's a delight. I don't know about you, but I love gardening. You know, well, I used to when I was younger. I haven't done it in many, many years, but uh, yeah, you know, I uh, I used to I used to love to watch. My mom loved to, to do garden and stuff, and I loved to take stuff that was ready to go and eat it. Right mm -hmm. now, <laughs> yeah, and that's what the garden will be like. Except it won't yeah. be hard. It'll be yeah. like this is a joy, and mm -hmm. I'm going to do this because the Lord gave this to me to do. So mm -hmm. it, it implies that when you're working the ground, it's worship. Isn't right. That wild? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. But yeah, I can see it. I can see that. All right. And then um, you know we we got five minutes. All right. We can get a couple more things done. <laughs> okay. The Lord commanded, "Of every tree of the garden, you are free to eat." Mm hmm. But as for the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you must not eat. Um. This we said the knowledge of good and evil. Mm hmm. In Hebrew, it is more like you will have the knowledge to be able to do good and evil. Okay. Which is why he didn't want us to have that knowledge. Yeah. Like we have the knowledge to make nuclear bombs now. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Is, a problem. Did, did one of the angels eat this thing too? Is, is that what caused all the problem? Um, I, you told me to ask stupid questions okay well i'm asking you a stupid question right now well the, yeah. yeah satan did you know, okay. you know, and he came in the form of the nakash okay. uh, or the serpent and yeah so he kind of said he wanted 
he wanted mankind to worship him. Because mm -hmm. you got to remember, Satan, he was the ruler over the th He was like second in charge in yeah. heaven. He yeah. was the hoopah, mm -hmm. the covering angel. Yeah. And he had, um, you know, so he, he would do that. Now there's essentially no, no covering until mm -hmm. that's what Jesus came. And now he's a covering again. He right. fixed all that. Mm -hmm. But um, he's like, whoa, you should worship me instead because look how beautiful I am. Mm. Okay. Now he fell, and now here comes Adam, and he's got that position. He's going to be made in the image of God. He he want he has the position that Satan wanted. Yeah, yeah. Adam was created in the image and after his likeness, mm -hmm. and that's what he wanted. So he's yeah. like, I'm going to destroy this guy. Um, I'm going to ruin all this, and I'm going to go ahead and keep creation for myself. Mm. Yeah, and he's I, been working at that for six yeah, thousand years. He still years. thinks he can do it. <laughs> If, if there's 6,000 years, he's still thinking, I, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Dude, no. it's not going to happen. <laughs> all right, just, uh -huh. just give up on it, okay? So if any of you are following Satan, thinking, you know, and he's making you all these promises, okay? Because some of you are out there, you're listening to this, and Satan's making you all these promises. You your wealth and fame, mm -hmm. it, you know, and he can, he can adjust things for a little while here on the earth. But let me tell you something. When Judgment Day comes, you're going to have a big problem because yeah. now you're not dealing with hey what did satan think anymore you're going to deal directly with the creator of the universe right. and he's going to say uh sorry this is my place yeah. all right if you don't want to be with me then there's only one other place that would right. be the lake of fire yeah. where yeah. there is nothing good okay and that's what he says here so it says um you will know how to do good and evil all right and then um mot to mot is he says in that day you shall eat you shall surely die right yeah mm -hmm. okay well mot is die and then tamot uh is like you're really gonna die mm. so it the when it says in that day you eat thereof you shall surely die mm -hmm. it literally is translated as in dying you will die oh okay. so it's like it, it is a process of dying. A process, not a not an immediate. Um, yeah, not an re day, immediate in event. In that day, well, how come he didn't yeah. die in that day? Well, right. he did die in that day because he died within that thousand years. Yeah, a thousand yeah. years is as a day. Mm -hmm. um, but it says, "Dying, you will die. You will be doomed to die." Mm -hmm. Is yeah. a good English doomed. Which, yeah, that that's a better translation. It really is. Okay. Yeah. But the Hebrew literally says, dying you shall die. Okay. So we would say doomed mm -hmm. to die. Yeah, okay. okay. That makes sense. All right. So since everyone is doomed to die unless they receive Christ, we got a minute left. And could you invite people in? I would out. be happy to do that. Um, all you've got to do if you want to make sure that you're going to heaven, don't let the world trick you. All you've got to do is go to the Lord yourself. Find you a nice, quiet place. Go in there and say, Lord... Uh, I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I know Jesus Christ is your son. I know he died for me on the cross. I know he spent three days in the tomb, and I know he rose again. Father, I promise to follow you all the rest of my life, even if it's one second. Please forgive me and allow me to be a part of your kingdom in praise to you. And Father, I know Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and I give you my heart. And Father, please forgive me. I'm ready to come home anytime now. Thank you so much. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I make this prayer. Amen. If you'll say that in your own words, you will be saved. We'll see you next time if we're still here. Thanks again for joining us today for The Last Christian Radio Show. And be sure to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday right here and at www.lastchristian.net until the trumpet sounds. It doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter if you're an Independent. The only thing that really matters is getting news that is correct. And you can only do that from the perspective of what God believes. If you want the real news and look at it from the lens of current events, tune in to The Last Christian every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday evening at 7.30 p.m. at www.lastchristian.net. That's www.lastchristian.net.